Hi there, and welcome to LifeWire's Outlook series for 2024. My name's James Marley. And I'm Ali Selby, and the ASX 200 really hasn't gone anywhere over the last two years, but if there's one thing fund managers tell us time and time again, it's to always look beneath the surface. So in this video, you're gonna hear about a selection of stocks that have got game-changing catalysts that could elevate them to star status in the year ahead. Is there a company out there that you think has a really interesting catalyst that could really elevate its prospects in 2024? Yeah, for me, it's Aurora. So Aurora, you know, was spun out of Amcor. You know, pretty pretty boring business, you know, boxes and bottles. They went and bought Saverglass this year, which was a, a French company that produced high-end bottles. The market didn't like it, but I don't think they've understood the business and how valuable the business is and how the destocking which has happened this year is already in their numbers for next year. So for me, that is a clear standout. That acquisition settling at the moment, that looks like a clear winner for 2024. Sheehan, this is not really answering your question because it's not listed yet, but Sheehan is one of the largest e-commerce companies in the world and it's slated to IPO in the first half of 2024. So if any of your listeners have teenagers, you've probably had a package from Sheehan delivered to your house. It's really taking share from Amazon and some of the global players in terms of e-commerce and the price point is, is lower than a lot of the other options out there. So I think it's important for two reasons. Number one, you know, it has implications for global e-commerce and also for you know, big box retailers and, and other consumer stocks in the US. Secondly, it will be important for the IPO market. Shein is valued anywhere between 60 and 100 billion, depending on what sort of valuation metrics you use. And last year, or in 2023, the IPOs, Arm, Birkenstock, Instacart, they were pretty disappointing. So if Shein can, can list and do well, I think it'll be an important signal that the IPO market is, is open. And I think it will be interesting for those of us that cover e-commerce stocks to see what the implications are for competitors. I mean, generally we don't buy companies, you know, expecting like a catalyst in, in the future. But I think uh, within the portfolio that I, I would point to, which hasn't had a great run of, of late, uh, would be Nike. Because it's had quite a few headwinds over the last few years. It's had, you know, China's been shut down. It's had freight costs elevated. It's had too much inventory in the channel. It's had to discount. And I think as we go through, through next year, I think all of those pressures will reverse and abate. And we'll see nice margin progression through the year. And I think then the market will move to focusing on what really I think is the true story in Nike, is the move increasingly into direct distribution. At the moment, that's the junior lithiums, which is rather strange. Uh, the senior lithiums are struggling, the lithium price is weak, it's had an enormous cycle, you know, up 10 times and then down 80%. So it's been a, a difficult space, but junior lithiums are still finding resources quite promptly and getting rewarded for that. So um, there's a few of them in the portfolio. Some have done quite well and there's others we think we'll find. So we've just had our, my colleagues been out in the West and probably seen 60 companies last week or the week before that. And um, yeah, there's a lot to be seen and a lot of action still to come. If you had to name one of them, <laughs> which would it be? The one we've been owning is Azure and that's done quite well. Um, but there are, are a lot of them and it's part of that thematic that as we go to electric vehicles, the, the lithium supply needs to be up around 10 times probably. So there's plenty of space for everybody and you know, we have to see a lot more companies come to the market as well. So I think Mineral Resources has a really big year ahead of it. Min has a mining services business, an iron ore business and a lithium business. Now in their iron ore business in 2024, they're bringing on a big project at Onslow, which will take them from a very high cost marginal iron ore producer to being a low cost iron ore producer. And when they've got that up and running, that'll be 35 million tonnes of iron ore, which if it comes on it anywhere near the, where iron ore prices are today is gonna you know, print cash for them. Lithium, you know, they're probably going to double or triple production over the next 12 to 24 months. So even though prices have fallen, we think earnings can stabilise and or grow um, as they bring on that production. And then the mining services business just keeps ticking along year after year. So that's one that I think will have a very big 2024. Premier Investments is the one I've selected here. PMV is the ticker. So retail business run by Solomon Liu. Um, they've announced a, tr a strategic review um, of the overall business. So um, for a reminder, they're a retailer with key brands like Smiggle and Peter Alexander. One of the options that they've talked about is potentially spinning out those brands. So Peter Alexander and Smiggle, which are their two probably most valuable brands and best performing brands. So if they spin those 
brands out. Potentially the old Just Group brands could be spun into Maya, you know, when we hypothesize about what could be done with the business. Um, then you're left with four or $500 million of net cash on the balance sheet and a substantial shareholding in Breville. So when you build the sum of the parts there, we think there's good value in PMV. They've flagged that the strategic review will be conducted over the first half of next calendar year. So we think that we'll wait the outcome of that, but that certainly could be one that could see the share price trade higher, we believe, uh, in the event that they put some of those initiatives in place. What's the company that you think has uh, a game-changing catalyst for it in 2024? I'll hedge my bets and I'll give you two. The first one is Botanics. So that's a pharmaceutical business. They had a uh, misfire on an initial FDA and we're expecting an FDA approval in uh, 24. We think that'll be a really important catalyst for the stock. So that one looks really interesting. And the second one is an engineering company like a podium. They're early stage on a couple of very large scale copper projects with Barrick. Barrick have a very strong balance sheet. We like the long term future and outlook for copper. And we think they're really well positioned to get behind some of these mega projects. So I'm going to give you a bit of a non-consensus pick, and that's Baidu, which is the largest search engine in China. It's got 663 million monthly active users. This is a stock that is on the cusp of AI monetization, but in fact, they've been investing in this for the last decade. So this is something that investors are so excited about, you know, in the US and in Western markets. Baidu is the leader in AI across the stack in China and they're on the cusp of monetizing it through their search engine, but also through their cloud and enterprise business. It's going to enable them to really accelerate their growth and really accelerate their leadership um, in that space as well. And this is a business that if you exclude their cash, it's trading on seven times PE and they're also sort of returning that cash to shareholders. So in comparison to the type of multiple you would pay in the US market for that same you know, durable growth trajectory that AI is going to provide, it's, it's a really compelling pick and we think it's something that's going to really start to be unlocked in the, in the next year. Look, there are a couple of, of, of candidates for that, but look, let me just talk about Smart Group. Um, you know, it's a business we've owned that does novated leases and salary packaging. And traditionally, the only people who can take advantage of that, of that tax arbitrage, are people who work either for the government or charities. Now, the, the federal government has changed the rules and they say everybody can use that if they buy an electric vehicle for some years. And that's going to dramatically increase the addressable market for that sector. And look, the market is aware of this, but I think over 24, we'll see exactly how good this is going to be. So this could be a catalyst for smart group in particular and the sector as a whole. I think e-commerce is an area that is, um, you know, provides strong secular growth. Shopify is a company that uh, we continue to like. I think what we've seen this year is that it's starting to show, you know, great profitability and we should continue to see that operating leverage come through in 2024. We own Sigma Healthcare in the pharmaceutical wholesale space. It's been very topical lately because yep. all of a sudden it's a great way to get potentially get some exposure to Chemist Warehouse, which is arguably the highest quality, best in class retailer in the country. So we've owned Sigma because we like the, the economics and the, the strategic nature of its assets in that pharmaceutical wholesale uh, business, um, delivering drugs to pharmacists, front and back of shop. But all of a sudden you've got this wonderful potential opportunity to be exposed to Chemist Warehouse, which, which as I say, is a compelling opportunity for lots of investors growing that, uh, that top line, double digit, 15% EBIT margins, very strong operational business, very strong branding. You'd love to have a piece of that business if you could. Yeah, I'm going to go back to the really small end and a little company called Vysan, V-Y-S. It's a, a drilling company, operates in the mining industry. None of that is interesting. But the drilling that they do do, and they've got, they've got very unique types of drills, is to regulate water flow in the Pilbara. So the big iron ore miners, they, they are drilling into an aquifer and they've got to regulate water and they've got to pump water out and pump it back in. These guys are the number one players in that. That's growing quite strongly. Park that aside. So the valuation supports that. A bit more steady than most drillers. What they've got coming up potentially is water rights. So they might be able to secure the water rights for excess water that comes out of the Pilbara. Mm. And where do they want that? They want it up around the Pilbara, Port Hedland and so on. There's new industries that are dying out for a regular supply of water. Now, if they can do that with virtually no capital, that's a project that could easily, if they get it right over the next four or five years, maybe four or five times the share price. Let's see. It's a new asset, but it's definitely got blue sky attached to it. <laughs>